The project risk management knowledge area includes the processes that identify, evaluate, respond to, and monitor project risks. By their very nature of creating a unique product, service, or result in operating within constraints and under assumptions, projects cannot exist without risks. There are risk factors in every project objective, deliverable, and activity that exists starting with the earliest inception phase all the way until closure. Though we often think of risks as being threats with negative consequences, there are also positive risks, called opportunities, that can increase the project's chances of success or which can be exploited to save time or money. Project risk management can be thought of as a balancing act because innovation, which is so necessary for successful projects, does not occur without elements of risk. So the objective of project risk management is not to avoid risks entirely, but to increase the probability and impact of positive events, and decrease the probability and impact of events adverse to the project one. Without risk taking, new methods of efficiency, originality, and competitiveness can be achieved. So the project risk processes make sure the costs of risks are weighed against the benefits they provide. The project manager has the key role in project risk management even if there are professional risk personnel also assigned to the project, and a proactive approach is necessary because risk is the only root cause of project failure. Behind any unsuccessful project objective is an opportunity that wasn't capitalized upon or a risk caused by a false assumption, restrictive constraint, or an event that wasn't sufficiently planned for. The project risk management knowledge area includes the processes that identify, evaluate, respond to, and monitor project risks. Plan risk management. Defining how risk planning processes will be approached and identifying what overall risk management activities will take place. Identify risks. Thoroughly uncovering and documenting project risks. Perform qualitative risk analysis. Assessing the probability and impact of identified risks in order to establish risk priorities. Perform quantitative risks analysis. Further cost, probability, and impact analysis of individual risks so that probability and impact can be aggregated to the project level. Plan risk responses. Developing an action plan for identified risks, including responses to priority risks should they occur. Monitor and control risks. Tracking identified risks, reporting on risk symptoms and impacts, and watching for new risks. Plan risk management. Since risk management activities have a bearing on other risk management activities, including scope, cost, schedule, and quality, Risk planning should occur as early as possible risk management planning involves defining what risk management activities will occur, establishing the allotted time and cost for risk management activities, assigning risk management responsibilities, deciding how risk probability and impact will be measured, deciding on acceptable risk thresholds and tolerances. Plan risk management. Inputs. Project scope statement. The project scope statement details the measurable goals, objectives, deliverables, and requirements of the project, and what the acceptance criteria of deliverables will be. It also describes the work required to meet all objectives and deliverables of the project, and it also contains milestones, assumptions, risks and costs. The project scope provides an indication of the level of risk management that the project will require. Cost Management Plan The Cost Management Plan is a part of the Project Management Plan, 
and it provides guidance for all the cost processes. It establishes how project costs will be planned for, estimated, organized, reported on, forecasted, and managed. For planning of risks, the cost management plan defines how the financial costs of risk management activities will be budgeted for. Schedule Management Plan Part of the Project Management Plan the Schedule Management Plan details how the project schedule will be managed and controlled. For risk planning, it defines how risk management activities will be scheduled. Communications Management Plan The Communications Management Plan is a subsidiary plan of the Project Management Plan, and it details the communications needs and requirements of the project and of the stakeholders, assigns responsibility details the frequency and methods for communication elements, and defines the escalation paths for issues. For risk planning, it defines how data on risk will be communicated. Enterprise Environmental Factors Risk planning is affected by the risk tolerances of the organization and its stakeholders. Organizational Process Asset Risk planning is affected by the risk management methodology of the organization, standardized risk management templates risk categories, and risk reporting formats, plan risk management. Tools and techniques Planning meetings and analysis Risk management planning will involve meetings and discussions between the project manager, project team, stakeholders, and others within the organization as needed. Plan Risk Management Outputs Risk Management Plan The Risk Management Plan is a component of the Project Management Plan. It details and defines the risk management activities for the project. The plan establishes the risk methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk categories, probability and impact scales risk tolerances, frequencies of risk management activities and reporting, and the budget and schedule for risk management activities, risk management plan, risk management methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk budget and schedule, tolerances, thresholds, and authority, risk categories, each knowledge area has at least one subsidiary plan focusing on a specific subject as part of the overall project management plan. Pre-planning is the purpose of these components, and these plans map out the specific requirements for the deliverables and project management processes that will take place in that knowledge area. This pre-planning may sound like a lot of work but we can think of these subsidiary plans as being the scope statements for the knowledge area because they describe the who, what, where, why, and how of the project management work that will be performed for that section subject matter. The risk management plan pre-plans for project risk management. This plan establishes the risk management methodology for the project risk management methodology describing the approaches, tools, and techniques that L govern how project risk management will occur. Risk Categories Common Lexicon of Risk Terminology Probability and Impact Scales, Definitions, and Estimating Techniques Formats and Methods that L be used for Risk Reporting Responsibilities for Risk Management Activities Risk roles as required for the project risk manager, risk management team. Responsibilities for subsequent risk management processes risk identification, qualitative and quantitative analysis, risk response planning, and risk monitoring. Budget, schedule, and frequency of risk management activities activities needed for risk management and incorporated into the project schedule resources and costs allocated to risk management and risk activities as later defined and incorporated into project cost baseline 
frequency of risk management activities, such as risk reassessments and risk audits tolerances, thresholds, and authority levels. Stakeholder risk tolerances Tolerance levels and thresholds for risks Decision-making authority levels and escalation paths Risk categories Risk categories are general classifications that individual risks will be assigned to, and these categories are established as part of the risk management plan. They are helpful for organizing risks, spotting trends, aiding risk identification, and for reporting. These categories can be based on standards set by the organization or industry, or they may be specific to the project type. Risk categories are shown on a risk breakdown structure, which is a hierarchical, graphical display of risk categories similar in appearance to the work breakdown structure having multiple tiers of related risk classification, probability and impact scales. Later risk processes will prioritize and assess risks based on their probability and what kinds of impacts they will have on the project if they occur. Those assessments need to use a consistent approach to be valid, so the risk management plan establishes what scales will be used to measure probability and impact. The scales need to be clear and well understood by the people involved in the risk processes, and they should be complex enough to accurately represent the risk yet be simple enough so that they're meaningful. For example, Having a scale that runs from 1 to 100 sounds like it would lead to better risk data, but it might only generate confusion since people could find it difficult to gauge what exactly is the difference between a ranking of say 63 and 68. Scales also need to incorporate a weighting method for the importance of different project objectives. For instance, if staying within the project is most critical then risks that could have a negative financial impact need to be weighted more heavily. When establishing probability and impact scales, there are three types of scales that can be used. A relative scale or ordinal scale is the most simple and uses indicators such as low, medium, and high. These types of scales are easy to understand but they may not be detailed enough for some projects. Relative scales are usually correlated to a linear or nonlinear scale. A linear scale or cardinal scale is numeric, and is commonly used to express the probability of the risk, so a rating of 1 would imply a very low probability while a rating of 9 would indicate a very high probability of a nonlinear scale is also numeric, but the intervals between the designations are not equal for example, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. Nonlinear scales are used to give more or less weight to an objective or impact, probability and impact matrix. The probability and impact matrix provides a visual and textual color-coded structure to the scale and scoring for the probability and impact of risks. The matrix will be used later during qualitative analysis, but having a brief overview now helps us to understand more about how the probability and impact scales are used. Key features of the matrix are that it provides clear instructions, formulas, and examples for rating, scales, and scoring methods. It provides a legend for the risk's overall score, usually in the form of a RAG rating for red, amber, or green. Even though at this stage we're not concerned with individual risks, the best way to fully understand the different scales and how they relate to risk scoring and rating is for us to see how all these pieces fit together into the final result. As we look at this example, let remember that there is no single approach towards establishing scales, scoring formulas, or ranking methods, so what is shown here is only an illustration of a start-to-finish view of how a probability and impact matrix can be used. Identify risks In the Identify Risks process, 
we'll develop the risk register, which is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities that might be encountered on the project. The risk management plan is a key input to this process because it establishes the time and budget allocated to identification activities, and it also describes what activities will be used to uncover risks. Risk identification should be done early in project planning because later risk processes rely on the risk register and risk decisions may impact the budget, schedule, and scope of the project. Some identified risks may require immediate action. Risk identification will reoccur throughout the entire project since. New risks may become evident only after project execution is underway Approved project changes may introduce risks. Changes outside the project boundaries may introduce risk factors. Actions taken in response to occurring risks may themselves generate risks. Symptoms, risk causes, probability, and impact may not be as originally planned. Proper risk identification requires a thorough understanding of the work being undertaken and uncovering risks is a collaborative effort involving the project team, stakeholders, subject matter experts, and possibly consultants, vendors, and risk professionals. The project manager should foster a project culture where everyone on the project is aware of risks and is on the lookout for them. No one should feel hesitant about openly raising risk issues for fear that it will be perceived as bad news. Identify risks. Inputs. Risk management plan. The risk management plan defines the risk management activities for the project, and it establishes the risk methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk categories, probability and impact scales, risk tolerances, frequencies of risk management activities and reporting and the budget and schedule for risk management activities. Activity cost estimates. Activity cost estimates are a complete accounting of all component costs, such as labor, resources, services, fees, licenses, of a scheduled activity. The reliability of these estimates can be a source of project risks. Activity duration estimates. Activity duration estimates are the work periods required to complete a scheduled activity. Since there are many factors that influence duration, including resource availability, duration estimates can be a source of project risks. Scope Baseline The Scope Baseline is the Approved Project Scope Statement, WBS, and WBS Dictionary. The scope includes explicit and implicit assumptions which are risks and constraints, which are also risks. The scope can also highlight risk elements due to project complexity. Stakeholder Register The Stakeholder Register identifies all project stakeholders and contains attributes such as the person's name, title, position, project interest, expectations, and influence. Stakeholders should participate in the risk identification process, and their interests and expectations may also be risk factors. Cost Management Plan The Cost Management Plan is a part of the Project Management Plan, and it establishes how project costs will be planned for, estimated, organized, reported on, forecasted, and managed. The plan approach to cost management may increase or decrease project risk factors. Schedule Management Plan Part of the Project Management Plan, the Schedule Management Plan details how the project schedule will be managed and controlled. The plan approach may increase or decrease project risk factors. Quality Management Plan the Quality Management Plan is a component of the Project Management Plan. The Quality Management Plan details the quality policy of the project, including how the project management team will address quality assurance, quality control, and continuous improvement for the project. 
the plan approach may increase or decrease project risk factors. Project documents Project documents outside of the project management plan can be used to uncover risk elements. Enterprise environmental factors Commercial databases, checklists, benchmarking, and industry-specific articles may help uncover risk elements. Organizational process assets Lessons learned, risk identification templates, and historical project information may help identify risks, identify risks. Tools and techniques Documentation reviews A review of project documentation can expose constraints, assumptions or incomplete documentation that can be sources of risks. Information gathering techniques Risks can be identified through any combination of information gathering techniques, such as brainstorming, interviewing, SWOT analysis, root cause identification, and the Delphi technique. Checklist analysis Risk checklists from previous projects can be used to assist in risk identification, or risk checklists can be established. Checklists used should be reviewed and improved upon so that they're useful for later projects. Assumptions analysis Assumptions analysis reviews the validity and soundness of assumptions since assumptions are always a source of risk. Diagramming techniques Diagrams can help identify risks by exposing relationship or by delving into the root causes of risks. Risk diagramming techniques include cause and effect diagrams, flow charts, and influence diagrams. SWOT analysis SWOT analysis involves the review and analysis of group discussions on strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for project objectives. Expert judgment Expert judgment is based upon the experience and knowledge of subject matter experts, identify risks. Outputs Risk register The risk register, a component of the project management plan, is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities the project faces. It also contains supplementary data about each risk, including its impact, probability, risk response, budget, risk owner, and contingency and fallback plans, risk identification sources. Risk identification is best started by looking at a few key project documents and factors. 1. Project Scope Baseline The Project Scope Statement, Work Breakdown Structure and WBS Dictionary are the best places to begin looking for risks since these documents thoroughly explain the project work and identify constraints and assumptions. Anywhere we find a constraint, we should consider it a risk factor since it limits the project's options, usually time, cost, or technology. For instance, a constraint that requires a specific technology to be used could introduce risks. Constraints are risk factors only as long as the constraint is in effect, so once the project successfully fulfills the objective within the constraint or the constraint is removed then the risk factor no longer exists. Though every project is unique, some are more so than others and the scope statement can also illuminate risks due to unconventional approaches, complexity, or technical elements. Projects using unproven methods, techniques, personnel, or technology have added risks that need subjected to further analysis. 2. Activities The activity list, activity attributes, activity resource estimates, and activity duration estimates are useful for risk identification. Risks can be embedded in the technical components of activities, the relationships between activities, their resource needs, or in the durations allotted to the activities. 3. Project Management Plan Risks can also be found in the Project Management Plan and its components. 
risk factors can be embedded in any of the management plan's scope, schedule, cost, quality, human resources, communications, or procurement, as well as the risk management plan itself. The integrative aspects of the component plans and the interplay between time, cost, quality, and scope can generate elements of risk. In particular, the following subcomponents should be well understood and scrutinized for risk elements. Scope Baseline Cost Management Plan Schedule Management Plan Quality Management Plan Procurement Management Plan 4. Project Documents Risk factors can be found in other sets of project documents. Earned value measurements can expose early signs of risks related to cost or schedule performance. Network diagrams can show risks related to activity dependencies and resource contention. Project baselines, like scope, schedule, cost, and quality, can be a risk source when the baseline is too restrictive or aggressive. Work performance information should be regularly monitored for signs of risks related to schedule, budget, and quality. The issue log should be monitored since it may contain problems that are early signs of risks. The change log can also give clues to risks by reviewing what types of changes are being requested. 5. Enterprise Environmental Factors Benchmarking, white papers, commercial databases, or academic studies relating to the project subject matter can expose risk factors. Factors within the organization can also be risk elements, including its culture, portfolio management practices, organizational hierarchy and reporting structures. Even the personalities of the stakeholders and the project team members or their interrelationships can lead to threats or opportunities. 6. Organizational Process Assets Lessons learned from similar projects can be valuable sources for identifying risks and there may be risk checklists available that can serve as reminders so that risk factors are not overlooked. Methods to Identify Risks Risks can be uncovered using a variety of tools and methods. Information gathering techniques. Documentation reviews. Assumptions analysis. Checklist analysis. Information gathering techniques. SWOT analysis. Diagramming technique. Information gathering techniques. Brainstorming. Brainstorming sessions with a mix of diverse and experienced people are critical to finding risks. Risk discussions are best when they include a mix of participants with different backgrounds, experiences, and skills. For risk identification the facilitator will want to encourage participants to think broadly about risks and not focus too narrowly only on what is commonly perceived as risk. A short introduction to project risk management may be necessary for the project team. The facilitator can also use specific project objectives and well-worded, leading questions at starting points like, what events might keep us from reaching this goal? Prompt-driven questions are good for not only uncovering risks, but identifying causes and impacts. Interviewing some of the best ways to identify risks are listening and asking good questions of people with knowledge in the project's subject areas. Interviewing can be as simple as talking with someone via email, over lunch, or through a structured, sit-down meeting in his or her office. In whatever manner it takes place, the interviewer should be well prepared about the subjects involved and ask open-ended and focused questions. Yes or no answers are generally not helpful, and conversely if the questions are too broad, the interviewee may not be able to provide specific enough answers regarding risks. Surveys Surveys, such as the Delphi technique, 
can be used to gather risk information from subject matter experts. The Delphi technique does this anonymously so that the results can be analyzed by a third party without any bias as to the source of the opinion. The tabulated results can then be used to reach a consensus on project risks. Root Cause Analysis Root Cause Analysis uses techniques that work to identify and solve the underlying causes to an issue. Documentation Reviews a review of project documents can expose additional risks. A documentation review looks for incomplete, missing, or out-of-date documents, which implies a lack of integrated project management. Document reviews might also uncover assumptions and constraints that were not explicitly identified in the project scope statement. Assumptions Analysis Assumptions anywhere in the project are risks elements because they are unproven. Assumptions can be explicit, such as those identified in the scope statement, or they may only be indirectly indicated in other project documents. To make it easier to track and update assumptions, they can be documented on an assumptions log. Assumptions are always used with the best of intentions. However, until the assumption is proven otherwise, it's still an uncertainty and all uncertainties are risk factors. The reliability of assumptions should be tested through assumptions analysis, which reviews the reliability of each assumption, what consequences will occur if the assumption turns out to be inaccurate, and what risk factors are generated by the assumption. Assumptions that are not likely to hold up or clearly erroneous should be diverted back to the appropriate project management process for replanning rather than trying to manage the assumption as a risk. Checklist analysis Checklists can be developed based on the risk categories used in the risk breakdown structure or from similar projects. As these checklists are reviewed throughout the project, they should be improved upon so that they are beneficial to subsequent projects. The PM Bach refers to this as checklist analysis, SWOT analysis. SWOT is credited to Albert Humphrey, who led a research study to find out the reasons why corporate planning failed 5. SWOT is a strategic planning tool based on brainstorming that identifies strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats related to an objective. SWOT results are subjected to additional reviews and converted into action items through SWOT analysis. SWOT is best performed in a diverse team setting with one, clearly stated project objective being discussed at a time. Participants then identify factors affecting the objective and write them in the corresponding quadrant on the grid. Strengths positive attributes or elements within the performing organization that will help the project reach the objective. Weaknesses Negative attributes or elements within the performing organization that can inhibit the project from reaching the objective. Opportunities Positive attributes or elements outside the performing organization that will help the project reach the objective. Threats Negative attributes or elements outside the performing organization that can inhibit the project from reaching the objective. During the SWOT brainstorming session, the participants shouldn't overanalyze their responses, especially as they might find that a strength for one objective may turn up again later as a weakness for another goal. After SWOT items have been gathered, each one needs subjected to further questioning and converted into identified risks, how strengths and opportunities can be exploited and how weaknesses and threats can be avoided or mitigated. Diagramming techniques Diagramming techniques can include flow charts, cause and effect diagrams, and influence diagrams. Diagramming techniques can aid in risk identification for the same reasons that they're useful as part of quality control process 8.3. They can highlight relationships and dependencies between project factors that might generate risks, and diagrams can help to identify the root causes of risks.
a flowchart graphically illustrates the steps, sequences, and decision points in a process. It can identify contention points or relationships in the process that could generate risks. A cause and effect diagram shows what root causes can be contributing to an issue or problem. It's also known as a fishbone diagram or an Ishikawa diagram. An influence diagram is a visual representation of a decision. Influence diagrams offer a way to identify and display the essential elements, including decisions, uncertainties, and objectives, and how they influence each other. Unlike flow charts, influence diagrams do not show paths in any sequential order. Risk register. The risk register is an important component of the project management plan. The risk register is a complete and running list of project risks, and it's an input to all risk processes. The information about each risk will also be expanded upon in later processes. The full contents of the risk register are described below along with the risk processes where each element is most likely to be collected. Risk register, alternate views as the risk register gets completed, it can provide several alternative views by being reorganized, resorted, or summarized. Watch list. Low priority risks should be regularly monitored so make sure they are not occurring and that their probability, impact, or priority hasn't changed. Prioritized risks. Qualitative analysis results in which risks are the highest priority and should receive detailed risk management efforts. Urgent risks. Risk processes may uncover risks that are already underway or which are imminent. Urgent risks need immediate planning and action. Trends and common factors. Risk categories, root causes and impacts may expose trends that can make for more efficient risk response planning or risk monitoring. Probabilities Risk scores can be aggregated and analyzed at the objective, deliverable, or project level to predict how likely it is that the project will reach its objectives. An overall risk level for the project can also be tabulated. Perform qualitative risk analysis. Perform qualitative risk analysis follows risk identification, and it prioritizes risks based on their likelihood of occurring and their potential impact to the project objectives. Prioritization is needed because risk identification uncovers a large number of risks having at least some potential to influence project objectives. However, Many of those risks will be of such a low priority or have such a small impact that it is not cost-effective to address them, so qualitative analysis allows the project team to focus on the most important risks. The risk register provides the list of identified risks to be evaluated, and the risk management plan provides the details on how probability and impact will be assessed and what risk scoring formula and ranking criteria will be used. Risks are prioritized and ranked based on their overall risk rating score, but risks can also be prioritized by their expected monetary value, impact, or any combination of other methods. Perform qualitative risk analysis. Inputs. Risk Register The Risk Register is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities the project faces. It also contains supplementary data about each risk, including its impact, probability, risk response, budget, risk owner, and contingency and fallback plans. Risk Management Plan The Risk Management Plan is a component of the Project Management Plan. It details and defines the risk management activities for the project. The plan establishes the risk methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk categories, probability and impact scales, risk tolerances, frequencies of risk management activities and reporting, 
and the budget and schedule for risk management activities. Project Scope Statement The Project Scope Statement details the measurable goals, objectives, deliverables, and requirements of the project, and what the acceptance criteria of deliverables will be. It also describes the work required to meet all objectives and deliverables of the project, and it also contains milestones, assumptions, risks, and costs. The scope statement helps determine the impact a risk may have on the project objectives and may help determine its probability. Organizational Process Assets Data from similar Past projects and risk databases will help determine impacts and probabilities, perform qualitative risk analysis. Tools and techniques Risk probability and impact assessment This assessment investigates each identified risks to expose the probability and impact to all the project objectives. This data is used to prioritize or rank risks. Probability and Impact Matrix The Probability and Impact Matrix uses an established rating criteria and scoring formula for assigning a score to identified risks based on their probability and impact. Risk Data Quality Assessment Before qualitative analysis is performed, the risk data gathered should be reviewed for accuracy, reliability, and integrity. Otherwise, the analysis will be based on flawed data. Risk categorization To help in prioritization or ranking, risks can be categorized in any useful method, such as by deliverable, phase, objective, or technology. Risk urgency assessment Qualitative analysis may uncover risks that are imminent. These may need fast-tracked into subsequent risk processes for immediate attention. Expert judgment Qualitative analysis requires subject matter experts and expert judgment is needed to interpret, evaluate, and present the qualitative data uncovered, perform qualitative risk analysis. Outputs Risk register updates Qualitative analysis results in prioritization of risks, which is shown on the risk register. The risk register is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities the project faces. It also contains supplementary data about each risk, including its impact, probability, risk response, budget, risk owner, and contingency and fallback plans. Risk Data Quality Assessment it's best to first make sure that the risk data uncovered so far is solid. Otherwise the analysis will be a wasted effort because it could be based on flawed data. Risk data quality assessment reviews the quality, reliability, accuracy, and integrity of the risk data collected. This includes making sure each risk and its potential impacts and causes are sufficiently described and reviewing where the risk information came from. Any doubtful, unreliable, or incomplete data should be addressed before qualitative analysis is performed. Risk Urgency Assessment As risks are reviewed, it may be obvious that some risks are more likely to occur in the near term or are already occurring making these risks a top priority and requiring them to be fast-tracked to other risk processes for immediate planning and action. Risk categorization Grouping and sorting risks in different manners can help to prioritize them. The one aspect of this tool is resorting risks by the categories established in the risk management plan. That's only one approach so the name of this tool is misleading. Regrouping risks into any helpful classification can expose similarities that could make prioritization and later risk response planning easier. Ways that risks can be grouped include by risk owner, deliverable, phase, or technology. Risk probability and impact assessment The two components of any risk prioritization method are the risk's probability and a gauge of its potential impact. Both figures are converted into ratings accomplished through the risk probability and impact matrix. 
The risk management plan establishes how the probability and impact assessments are to be made and where the data is to be gathered from. Most of the probability and impact data can be gathered from experts at the same time as risk identification, but additional interviews and meetings may be necessary with subject matter experts and the project team. Probability is usually estimated as a percentage while impact is estimated as a cost, time, or quality measure. Both estimates are usually quite subjective, and given in range, risk probability and impact matrix. The probability and impact matrix assigns a rating or score to each risk based on its probability and impact assessments. The rating or scoring method is established in the risk management plan, and it converts assessments into linear, nonlinear, or relative scales. The matrix can be either paper or software based, but in either case it will include columns and rows for recording the probability rating and the ratings for the impacts to different project objectives. In order for assessments to be uniformly converted to ratings there must be unambiguous definitions. If the scale used is not consistent from risk to risk or person to person then subsequent rankings, scores, and priorities will be flawed. The probability and impact matrix often includes a sample page where the rating system is explained with descriptive legends, probability rating. A legend provides the mechanism for converting probability assessments into a rating that is normally a linear scale. In this example, a relative scale is converted into an estimated probability percentage, impact rating. The impact scale may be tailored to each project objective, and very clear guidelines are provided for rating the impact assessments. It is very common for there to be different ratings for different project objectives based on their importance, and opportunities positive risks often have different scales than threats negative risks, scoring formula. The probability rating and the impact rating provide the basis for the overall rating or score for each risk. The formula used can depend upon any combination of policies and personal preferences of the organization, customer, industry, risk manager, or project manager. A simple approach is to multiply the probability rating by the impact rating for each project objective and then summing these up to obtain the risk score, overall risk rating. The risk score is correlated to a table or legend on the probability and impact matrix that provides the overall risk classification. This is usually a color-coded scale of red high, amber medium, and green low, often called the RAG rating. Using the overall risk score, the entire list of identified risks can be ranked into a prioritized list allowing further risk management efforts to focus on the most dangerous or advantageous risk. Cautionary statements about the risk probability and impact matrix. The probability and impact matrix is a relatively simple and straightforward way of forming the basis for risk prioritization. However, if it is not approached with forethought into the rating, scoring, and prioritization methods, it can lead to risk management problems. The drawbacks arise from relying on the matrix as the only source for prioritizing risks and from perceiving it as an empirical source of data. There are nearly always additional factors which cannot be represented by the matrix, and though the goal of the matrix is to provide an objective view of the risk, it is based only on subjective estimates. First, to keep the matrix from becoming too unwieldy, the impact is shown only for the most important project objectives. In some cases this is not adequate thus causing a risk's true potential impact not be reflected by the matrix. Second, the combination of the probability rating, impact rating, and scoring formula can cause a high-impact low-probability risk to end up ranked as a low-priority or a low-impact high-probability risk to end up being ranked too high. Third, 
the skill and scoring method will need to be different for opportunities versus threats. This is because there's usually different criteria needed to exploit opportunities. Perform quantitative risk analysis. Activities in Perform quantitative risk analysis delve further into identified risks by assigning cost or other impact measurements to them. Quantitative analysis at the individual risk level can then be aggregated into estimates for the probability of achieving project objectives, like scope, budget, and schedule. Quantitative analysis will be repeated as new risks are identified or as it's deemed necessary for other identified risks. For project-level risk analysis, quantitative will reoccur frequently during risk monitoring and control to keep tabs on whether the project's overall risk level has changed. Since qualitative analysis is much more time-consuming than qualitative, it's normally performed only on high-priority risks. The risk management plan establishes how quantitative analysis is to be carried out and who has what responsibilities for it, and the project schedule and budget indicate the time and money that can be spent on quantitative analysis activities. Quantitative analysis results in updates to the risk register by expanding upon the risk data already collected. Data needed for quantitative analysis can come from historical information or commercial risk databases, but further interviews with risk professionals, subject matter experts, and the project team may be needed to gather estimates and likely risk scenarios if these weren't fully discussed during risk identification. Though the goals of quantitative analysis may differ between project types and risk types, the broad goal is to establish more definitive probability assessments and solidifying scope, time, cost, and quality ramifications of risks, perform quantitative risk analysis. Inputs Risk Register The Risk Register is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities the project faces. It also contains supplementary data about each risk including its impact, probability, risk response, budget, risk owner, and contingency and fallback plans. Risk Management Plan The Risk Management Plan is a component of the Project Management Plan. It details and defines the risk management activities for the project. The plan establishes the risk methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk categories, probability and impact scales, risk tolerances, frequencies of risk management activities and reporting, and the budget and schedule for risk management activities. Cost Management Plan The Cost Management Plan is a part of the Project Management Plan, and it establishes how project costs will be planned for, estimated, organized, reported on, forecasted, and managed. The plan approach to cost management may increase or decrease project risk factors. Schedule Management Plan Part of the Project Management Plan, the Schedule Management Plan details how the project schedule will be managed and controlled. The plan approach may increase or decrease project risk factors. Organizational Process Assets Historical Information from Similar Past projects and risk databases can aid in quantitative analysis, perform quantitative risk analysis. Tools and techniques Data gathering and representation techniques Quantitative analysis may require additional risk data that can be gathered from estimates obtained through interviews and expert judgment. Quantitative risk analysis and modeling techniques Sensitivity analysis, decision tree analysis, expected monetary value, modeling, and simulation help to quantify risks and their impacts. Expert judgment Quantitative analysis requires subject matter experts and expert judgment is needed to interpret, evaluate, 
and present the quantitative data uncovered, perform quantitative risk analysis. Outputs Risk Register Updates Quantitative analysis results in updates to the risk register, including the probability and impact assessments for risks. Data from the risk register can also be aggregated to provide data for risk analysis at the project level or at the project objective level. Estimating and probability distributions Estimates will be needed from people to further quantify probability and impact. Three-point estimates can be used to remove some of the unintentional biases that are always inherent in estimates. One person may be overly pessimistic while another may be overly optimistic. A three-point estimate uses a formula based on the optimistic, pessimistic, and most likely predictions to produce a weighted estimate. A commonly used three-point formula is pessimistic plus 4 multiplied by most likely plus optimistic divided by 6. Probability distributions and estimates are closely related because distributions are a mathematical description of uncertainties in the data, and estimates always have some degree of uncertainty. A three-point estimate produces a type continuous probability distribution that looks like a bell curve. If this curve looks familiar, it's because we've seen it as part of standard deviation in quality control. Probability distributions and simulations are rooted in statistics, and for most everyday projects we can rely on three-point estimates without being overly concerned with the different probability distributions. Simulation and modeling techniques Simulations and modeling apply different scenarios to project components to expose and highlight risk elements or dependencies that might not otherwise have been visible. Monte Carlo analysis is the most common simulation tool, especially in industries like insurance, engineering, and finance. Simulations and modeling are complex, statistical, computer-driven tools that require significant time, effort, and skills to master. Most project managers in general business environments will not encounter the need for Monte Carlo analysis. Sensitivity analysis Sensitivity analysis looks individually at each project objective and measures how uncertainty could impact that objective. This makes it possible to identify what risks have the greatest potential impact and can show how uncertainty can impact project objectives. For example, if labor cost could fluctuate between minus 20% and plus 20%, sensitivity analysis applies this cost range throughout affected project components and then displays which components are most susceptible to this risk. The results of sensitivity analysis are usually shown as a tornado diagram or a spider diagram. A tornado diagram is named due to its funneled appearance. Spider diagrams are more unusual, and they can appear in a variety of different manners, but they'll look similar to Venn diagrams. Expected monetary value analysis Expected monetary value EMV is the cost or benefit of an uncertain event. It's calculated by multiplying the monetary impact by probability. EMV is what one could expect over time if the condition is repeated over and over. Decision tree analysis. Decision trees visually map out options, and using EMV for each decision point results in a net value for each decision path. Even though a tool of quantitative analysis, decision trees are applicable to many project problems that have choices with levels of uncertainty. Decision trees typically show monetary impacts, but EMV can be used to express any measurement quantities, units, or time periods. Since EMV is only an average, decision trees do not make an absolute prediction about the result of alternatives, so they should be used only as one factor in the decision-making process. But even with this limitation, decision trees have the added benefits of Forcing the decision to be viewed systematically into all the component parts of the decision. 
forcing a quantitative approach in establishing probabilities for each alternative for example, 90% change of success, and in assigning monetary costs and benefits to each component. Plan risk responses In previous project risk processes, the risks were identified, analyzed, and prioritized but no action plans for the risks were established. In plan risk responses, we all decide on the actions needed to reduce the threat of negative risks or enhance the opportunities for positive risks as well as developing contingency plans. This process occurs after identified risks have been prioritized, and it will generally focus only on the highest priority risks. It will need to reoccur any time new priority risks are uncovered or as known risks are reassessed, and replanning may be required if the responses previously planned for risks prove to be ineffective. When discussing risk response planning, there are three different types of risk actions involved. Risk response The risk response determines the strategy for influencing the probability and impact of the risk before it occurs. For negative risks, its aim is to eliminate the risk or reduce its impact should it occur. For positive risks, the response tries to increase the probability or impact of the risk. The activities that support the risk response are taken before the risk occurs. For example, if the risk response strategy was to minimize a schedule risk, the response activities might be reworking the schedule to reduce the risk's factors so that the risk never materializes. Contingent response contingent plan Another type of risk action is called the contingent response, and it establishes what activities will take place should a specific event or situation occur and when those activities will cease. A contingency plan aims to influence the impact of a risk that is occurring. The risk response occurs before the risk and tries to alter the probability and or impact while the contingency plan only occurs after the trigger usually the risk event and focuses only on changing the impact. Regardless of the primary risk response strategy, a contingency plan should be in place for all but the lowest priority risks and even those depending upon what objectives they can impact. As an example, consider a schedule risk related to resource contention in which there are only a few people within the organization who can perform the needed tasks. The primary risk response might be to mitigate the risk by splitting the main activity into some subcomponents that a junior staff member can perform. But there's still a chance the senior level resources will not be able to complete their portion by the deadline, so a contingent response is also established that will kick in should the activity fall behind by more than three days. If that happens then an outside expert will be hired to assist the senior level team members until the task is back on schedule. Fallback plan The fallback plan kicks in if the contingency plan fails. It can be looked at as a contingency plan for the contingency plan. The fallback plan spells out steps will be taken to recover if the contingency plan fails and it specifies under what situations and circumstances it is activated and subsequently deactivated. Plan risk responses. Input. Risk register. The risk register is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities the project faces. It also contains supplementary data about each risk, including its impact, probability, risk response, budget, risk owner, and contingency and fallback plans. Risk Management Plan The Risk Management Plan is a component of the Project Management Plan. It details and defines the risk management activities for the project. The plan establishes the risk methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk categories, probability and impact scales, risk tolerances, 
frequencies of risk management activities and reporting, and the budget and schedule for risk management activities, plan risk responses. Tools and techniques Strategies for negative risks or threats Risk responses for threats are avoid, mitigate, and transfer Strategies for positive risks or opportunities Risk responses for opportunities are exploit, enhance, and share Strategies for both threats and opportunities Risk responses applicable to both threats and opportunities are accept and contingent Contingent response strategies Contingent responses are intended only if certain events occur. The most common contingent response is a contingency plan, which is put into execution should the risk even occur. XPERT judgment Expert judgment is based upon the experience and knowledge of subject matter experts. It's used to assess and evaluate the inputs and the information they contain. Plan risk responses. Output. Risk register updates. Risk responses, contingency and fallback plans, and risk action responsibilities are added to the risk register. Risk related contract agreements. Risk responses may result in contractual elements necessary to put the risk response into action. Reject management plan updates. Risk responses will usually require schedule and cost changes to be incorporated into the project management plan. The project management plan details how the project will be executed, managed, and controlled, including many subsidiary plans as to how changes to major project components, such as scope, budget and schedule, will be handled, and how important factors such as communication, risk and quality will be managed. The project management plan is the key source of information relating to project management for the project. Reject document updates. This process will likely result in updates to documents outside of the project management plan. Types of risk responses. There is only a handful of responses that can be undertaken for risks and it usually takes a combination of responses to successfully influence risks. As a reminder, risk responses are decided before the risk occurs and their aims are to influence its probability and potential impact should it occur. Avoid Avoidance activities aim to completely eliminate a risk probability or impact to zero. Avoidance can take several forms such as restructuring the project activities, scope, schedule, or cost to eradicate the root causes leading to the risk. Mitigate. If the risk cannot be avoided, actions might be taken to reduce the risk's probability or its impact if it does occur. A mitigated risk response may still require a contingent plan. Since insufficient planning is the root cause of many project risks, mitigation of those risks can be achieved by more thorough project planning. Mitigation usually involves making alternate choices that can be less than ideal. For example, if the risk is related to an untried technology that provides enormous benefits to the deliverable, the risk mitigation strategy might be to first develop a prototype or proof-of-concept model. This would involve additional time and cost, and the risk still is not avoided because there's still a chance that problems will arise from the technology when work on the deliverables begin, but the extra effort may significantly reduce the probability. Avoidance and mitigation are not interchangeable terms. If the risk is completely eliminated then avoidance was achieved, but if the risk's probability or impact is only reduced then mitigation was achieved. Transfer Transference assigns all or part of risk to a third party through outsourcing, contracts, insurance, warranties, guarantees, or performance clauses. The risk's probability or impact may not change 
but the responsibility for developing an effective strategy no longer resides only with the performing organization. Insurance against property or equipment risk is a good example of transference. Exploit Exploitation aims to ensure that the risk event definitely occurs so that its benefits can be realized. Exploitation can also take advantage of a definitive opportunity by maximizing its benefits. For example, if a warmer than normal weather pattern emerges during the winter, the opportunity can be exploited by immediately adjusting the construction schedule to take advance of the good weather. Enhance if actions can't be taken to guarantee that the opportunity will occur then responses might be taken to enhance its probability or its beneficial impact if it does occur. Share Sharing is similar to transference, but its aim is to share the opportunity with a third party who is best able to capitalize on it. Many technology companies establish partnerships with other companies to encourage further development around each other's products. For example, if company A develops a new memory chip it may pre-release the chip to manufacturers so that they can work on incorporating the chip into a next generation of handheld computing devices. Company A is sharing a marketing opportunity with its partners. Except, for both positive and negative risks, there may be little that can be done except to let things run their course. Acceptance is an option for risks with low probability, low impact, or those that have no reasonable action that can be taken. For example, the negative risk might be that a rare utility problem would cause the co-location facility to lose power but the probability and impact do not justify the cost of an off-the-grid electric generator. Acceptance of any risk should require contingency and fallback plans, even if done only at a high level for low-priority risks. Contingent A contingent response involves a contingency plan, which will be put into effect should the risk response fail. The contingent response identifies the exact situation and circumstances triggers in which the contingency plan can be put into effect and when it can be discontinued. This response type is used in combination with another risk response, such as mitigation. Monitor and control risks. Project risks do not remain static once the risk planning processes are completed. New risks crop up, responses may not work as planned, and the characteristics of risks might change. The risk monitoring and control process begins as soon as risk planning starts and continues until project closure. Activities in the monitor and control risks process include batching for new risks Analyzing identified risks for changes in probability or impact. Determining the need to execute contingency or fallback plans. Reviewing risk response actions and their effectiveness for risks that are underway, and if necessary determining the need to implement fallback plans. Keeping a close eye on the risk watch list. Monitoring residual risks. Patching for any assumptions that are not holding true. Making sure the risk management plan and risk management policies and procedures are followed. Analyzing risk data, identifying trends, and producing risk reports. Ensuring that appropriate records are maintained, including lessons learned documentation about risks instigating recommended changes and preventative or corrective actions as a response to results uncovered from risk monitoring and control, monitor and control risks. Inputs Risk Register The Risk Register is a comprehensive list of all threats and opportunities the project faces. It also contains supplementary data about each risk, including its impact, probability, risk response, budget, risk owner, and contingency and fallback plans. 
Project Management Plan The Risk Management Plan is a component of the Project Management Plan. It details and defines the risk management activities for the project. The plan establishes the risk methodology, risk roles and responsibilities, risk categories, probability and impact scales, risk tolerances, frequencies of risk management activities and reporting, and the budget and schedule for risk management activities, work performance information, schedule and progress status information, budget and cost status, quality status, estimates to complete, resource utilization information, and lessons learned. Any of this information can is useful for risk monitoring and control. Performance reports Performance reports provide information on schedule performance. They also can serve as alerts of current or potential problems, which impact individual and overall risk, monitor and control risks. Tools and techniques Risk reassessment Risk reassessment monitors identified risks for changes as well as watching for new risks. Risk audits Risk audits review the effectiveness of the project's risk management planning and may also be used to evaluate how effective risk response activities are for identified risks. Variance and trend analysis Deviations from the project plan can be indicators of a change in risk. Project variance tools, such as earned value analysis can indicate that current performance is not in line with what was planned. Technical performance measurement Technical performance measurement looks at the technical accomplishments achieved to what was planned. For instance, a difference in functionality within the deliverable can indicate a change in risk level for the scope objective. Reserve analysis Reserve analysis ensures that the amount of money or time in the contingency reserves is adequate for the risks remaining on the project's status meetings. Risk topics should be a regular agenda item at project meetings, monitor and control risks. Outputs Risk register updates Risk monitoring and controlling can result in updates to the risk register such as priority changes, trigger, symptom, or warning sign changes, or a change in risk responses due to the ineffectiveness of the original response. Organizational process assets updates. Variance analysis, the reasons for corrective or preventative actions, and any other lessons learned from risk monitoring and control should be documented as part of the lessons learned process so that they be available for later projects. Change requests Risk monitoring and control may identify changes that need made to any component of the project management plan to influence risks. These requests are submitted for review to the integrated change control process Project Management Plan Updates Risk monitoring and control can result in updates to the project management or any of its components. The project management plan details how the project will be executed, managed, and controlled, including many subsidiary plans as to how changes to major project components, such as scope, budget and schedule, will be handled and how important factors such as communication, risk, and quality will be managed. The project management plan is the key source of information relating to project management for the project. Reject document updates This process can result in changes to project documents beyond just the project management plan, risk monitoring activities. During risk monitoring and control the risk or project manager relies heavily on the risk management plan and the risk register. The risk management plan identifies what monitoring and reporting activities are necessary while the risk register has the characteristics of each risk, including priority, plan response, personnel responsibilities, symptoms, contingency and fallback plans, 
and the approved schedule and budget. Work performance information and performance reports provide data the risk manager uses to monitor the effectiveness of risk responses, including whether they're functioning within the time and cost constraints established and that they're having the desired effect. Performance data can also indicate changes in the project environment that are affecting the estimated probability or impact of identified risks. Risk audits review the overall risk management policies, procedures, and processes. Audits review the effectiveness of the project risk management plan. Risk audits can also refer to analyzing whether the risk response actions were effective and what impact they had on the project's overall risk level. Risk reassessment looks at individual risks to make sure their characteristics remain as originally planned and it also makes sure that a mechanism and environment are in place so that new risks can be identified. Risk reassessment should be a tool that's part of the project culture and included as an agenda item in status or other project team meetings. Continual reassessment is needed because risks are very prone to change between project planning and project execution. Performance, personnel, environmental, Organizational and technological changes directly influence risks levels. Any desired or needed changes discovered during reassessment are funneled through integrated change control for further review and approval. Technical performance measurement. The project deliverables are made up of many specific objectives and characteristics, such as functionality, form, usability, and so forth. Technical performance measurement compares those objectives with what is actually being displayed in the deliverables and looks for deviations. Deviations can be caused by the deliverable progress being ahead or behind schedule, or it can be due to extra or missing requirements. Deviations from the plan characteristics are an indicator as to how probable it is that the project will fulfill its scope. Variance analysis using performance data can indicate or confirm that threats or opportunities are occurring, and can also be used to forecast project success in meeting budget, time, or quality objectives based on risk factors. Analysis may also uncover trends, such as a common factor leading to an increase in multiple risks, which can make risk management efforts more effective. Reserve analysis makes sure that an adequate contingency reserve is available for risks. There can be contingency reserves for cost and time buffers in the schedule. Contingency reserves are tapped for risk contingency and fallback plans, and one or two costly risks may deplete the reserve, making the project susceptible to funding or scheduling deficiencies if additional problems arise. Status meetings Risk discussions should be embedded in all regular project meetings because the first signs of a change in risk levels or identification of new risks is usually discovered by those closest to the executing tasks the project team. Risk tolerance Each project is a whole, its individual objectives and the people involved have differing levels of risk that are acceptable. Safety, reputation, technical factors, contracts, reliability, cost, and schedule influence what amounts of risk are acceptable. The entities involved, like the customer, organization, and stakeholders, will also have their own attitudes towards risk, which may fluctuate depending upon the exact type of risk involved what project objectives may be impacted, and what alternatives exist. The amount of tolerance a person or organization has for risks is referred to as its risk utility, which is a measure of how much negative impact the organization or person is willing to accept and trade for a potential positive benefit. As part of balancing risk, the project manager has to often facilitate an agreement between risk-averse and risk-tolerant viewpoints. Risk-tolerant risk-seeking 
these people have a willingness to accept risks even when the benefit DOES and seem worth the negative impact. Risk Averse These people have a tendency to avoid risks even when the reward outweighs the potential negative impact. Risk Neutral These people generally have a logical, balanced approach that is weighted against the pros and cons of the risk. Risk Roles and Responsibilities Risk management activities for the project require roles to be established and personnel named to those assignments. The key roles in project risk management are Project Manager The project manager is responsible for overall risk management and ensuring that it properly coordinated with all other project management activities. Risk Manager the person responsible for establishing and overseeing risk management processes and coordinating them with the project manager. The risk manager monitors risks and regularly communicating the risk status to the project team and stakeholders. The risk manager will hold some level of decision-making authority, and where that authority begins and ends needs be documented in the risk management plan. Risk Owner this is the person who has the skills and expertise necessary to best manage a particular risk. This role assists in developing the risk responses, contingency plans, risk actions, and monitors the risk. Risk Action Owner or Risk Response Owner The person responsible for carrying out risk response activities for a particular risk. The project manager is responsible for ensuring that risk management is properly carried out. The risk manager establishes the overall project risk management methodology and for monitoring and controlling risks. Each individual risk has a risk owner, who is responsible for managing that risk, and one or more risk action owners, who will carry out risk response activities.